brief about uh, today's webinar we are uh, we have decided to start a series of webinar for different geosynthetic products in coming days okay the aim uh, to do this uh, different webinar on different geosynthetic product is as you all know that present government has giving very high emphasis on infrastructure projects okay and you may all aware about the pm gati shakti plan also where there is around 7.5 trillion inr is allocated for this plan under which around 2 trillions are only for morth okay and around 2.45 for railways so uh, government seeks to achieve the better value for money through their investments in infrastructure projects this may include the social economical and environmental benefits that can be achieved through this types of uh, projects actually today governments are trying to utilize a number of different strategies to achieve the better outcome so geosynthetics is a very small part in this infrastructure projects but still this industry will give contribution to the uh, nation by optimizing the project cost so we have decided to uh, go one by one product in detail regarding how we can use in infrastructure projects so today we start our journey with webinar on geocell which will be presented by uh, our mr dheeraj reddy who is a senior manager technical looking after roads and railways for various geosynthetic products so in today's webinar of geocell you will know everything about the geocell like product detail what is the specification of the product what is the testing criteria required as per the codal provision then various application of geocells and different case studies of the geocells so i think dheeraj you can now start uh, the webinar thank you everyone thank you everyone uh, also i just want to uh, convey that if you have any questions or discussion regarding this webinar it is advisable to write an email or whatsapp to us so we'll give you the uh, your answer in uh, by written mail or written answer in whatsapp okay so dheeraj please start yeah. thank you sir and uh, good afternoon everyone uh, i welcome you all to the webinar uh, on the geocell so before going into the webinar i'll just take one or two minutes to uh, cover the journey of techfab so basically uh, techfab which started in 2003 which is almost like 20 years back uh, with the manufacturing of non woven geotextile and woven geotextile and then the uniaxial geogrids from there we have grown by adding product by product to our portfolio and then we have uh, today we stand as the largest manufacturer of geosynthetics with highest manufacturing capacities covering all the uh, types of geosynthetic products and recently we have added the geohazard applications also which includes the rockfall and landslide mitigation products and uh, from here we look forward for the new challenges uh, in the infrastructure industry so going ahead in the today's presentation uh, as i said it is on the geocell particularly so we will be covering uh, specifically the geocell product details which includes the uh, properties of the geogrids test methods and its specifications and then we'll uh, see the different applications of the geocell in the infrastructure industry and uh, when i'm covering each application i'll be explaining the working mechanism of each application and uh, relevant codal provisions what all what are the codes that are substantiating such application and then in the uh, main course we'll also be uh, showing you one of the indian case study for each application and then at the end uh, i'll show you the installation methodology uh, how it's done at the at the field and then we'll conclude the session i i will try to uh, restrict the uh, 
session for 30 to 40 minutes. So starting with the GeoCell product, basically uh, this GeoCell is a three dimensional permeable and a honeycomb cellular structure as you can see in the images and which is made up of ultrasonically welded strips. So here you can see these are the strips which are welded together at the joints and these strips are made up of high density polyethylene that is HDPE and which is stabilized with carbon back to uh, have the resistance against UV or the sunlight. And this GeoCell as a product, it offers a unique solutions uh, for various sectors like roadways, railways, real estate or the thermal power plants, irrigation or any uh, other kinds of infrastructure uh, works. And uh, if you see the GeoCell product, uh, it has the joints which are welded uh, with by the means of ultrasonic welding. And this welds is made up of two rows and we have perforations on the cell wall. So these perforations cover 12% of area. The intention of these perforations is to ensure the drainage of a particular layer. So uh, basically these geocells are supplied to the site in a collapsed form, as you can see in this uh, top uh, right hand side image. And then at site, these are expanded and filled up with soil or aggregate or concrete, whatever the fill material is required as per the site uh, project requirements. So uh, when we are talking about the GeoCell as a product, basically this comes in the form of panels. When it is expanded, this panel has uh, the length and breadth as a dimension. And we, we have a particular area of this expanded panel. And as a cell, if we see, we have the uh, height of the cell, that is the thickness of the GeoCell, we call it, and the cell opening. This is the uh, welding distance between the two uh, joints, the distance between the two welds that we call as weld spacing. And if we see the uh, properties of the geocell, the geocell thickness starts from 75 mm thick to even up to 300 mm thick, depending on the project requirements, depending on the application and the uh, particular design requirement, we will be specifying which thickness of geocell is required. And at the same time, when we are talking about the well spacing, that is the opening of the geocell. The opening of the geocell varies from 330 mm to even 712 mm. Again, this is uh, the selection of the geocell is dependent on the particular project requirement. And these are the uh, expanded cell dimensions in terms of width and uh, length, each cell dimension. And at the same time, as a panel, if we see, these are the uh, dimensions of each panel, which is dependent on the opening size of the so uh, we have seen the geocell as a panel itself, but at the same time regarding the properties of the strip which is used for the uh, fabrication of this geocell panel entirely. So Ministry of Road Transport and Highway Specification or the IRC guidelines specify different properties of the geocell uh, strip, like you have the density of the strip, environmental stress crack resistance, and then the minimum carbon black content that should be there to prevent it from the uh, degradation due to UV. And then the cell wall thickness, that is the thickness of the strip which is being used. In general, it is 1.2 if it is for uh, slow protection works. And if it is for any load bearing application, it should be minimum 1.5. And at the same time, the seam peel strength, that is the uh, strength of your joint. And then the creep rupture strength. So this is the specification that is specified in IRC and MORTH. And at the same time, recently in 2020, uh, there was a standard in the name of BIS 17483, which specifies the uh, uh, different properties of geocells that has to be used for load bearing applications. And there is a part two also, which is for slow protection works. So which, which also includes the similar properties like density, environmental stress, crack resistance, carbon black content, the cell wall thickness, seam peel strength, <clears throat> and the resistance to oxidation. Uh, re retention of uh, breaking strength after the UV exposure, and then the frictional efficiency, the standard oxidation uh, induction time, etc., etc. So these are basically the properties which are specified in various codes like IRC, MORTH, or BIS. So in accordance with the uh, methodologies suggested in various codes, uh, the TechFab India has its uh, testing laboratories well equipped with NABL and GuyLab certifications, <clears throat> and we do have all the uh, uh, facilities to do the testings whenever we are supplying for a particular project. 
So moving ahead with the applications. So OK, now we have seen what a GeoCell is and how it looks and how it uh, what are the different properties of GeoCell. So where all this GeoCell can be applied in the infrastructure industry. So first is the ground improvement that is ground improvement below any embankments. The, when I call it as embankment, it can be either a road embankment or a railway embankment or any kind of uh, uh, an artificial embankment which is formed. And then the road pavement stabilization, especially the flexible pavement stabilization. And in case of railways, the stabilization of blanket layer or the ballast layer in the railway formations. And in case of the real estate, uh, when I call it uh, the real estate, especially the uh, the buildings. When we have a raft footing and we have a very poor soil, the, the soil properties can be improved and uh, the geocell can be used for the ground improvement below the raft foundations. And then the erosion, soil erosion protection for the natural or the embankment slopes. And then the lining of canals or uh, ponds. And at the last, there is one more application called the gravity or the reinforced soil wall. That is the retention structures. The, yes, the geocell can be used for the retaining structures also. So I'll show you in the uh, coming slides. So uh, when we are talking about all these applications, what are different standards on the codes that are available which can substantiate the use of geocell for these particular applications? So we have Ministry of Road Transport and Highway Specification 700, which covers the specification of all geosynthetic products in a way, and uh, geocell is one among them. So we have IRC 37, which uh, which is the guidelines for the design of flexible payments, which recommends the use of geocell for the uh, stabilization of granular layers in the flexible pavement. And then there is a guidelines called IRC SP 59, which is an exclusive guidelines for the use of geosynthetics in road pavements and associated works. It, co it covers all the geosynthetics and including the geocell. And there is a code called IRC is IRC 56, which is the recommended practices for the treatment of embankment and roadside sloops for erosion control. And this code recommends the use of geocell for the control of erosion on the embankment slopes. So the BIS 17483 part one and part two, it covers the geocell specifications for load bearing applications and slope erosion control applications. And for railway requirements, the RDSO guidelines are there, which are the comprehensive guidelines and specification for railway formations. It includes the provision of geocell for the uh, railway formations. So moving ahead with each application which we have uh, discussed just now, starting with the geocell for ground improvement. And when I say ground improvement, it can be for roads, railways or the uh, uh, raft footings. So the mechanism will be same for all the uh, things. Uh, here I am showing you uh, two different sections. One is the unreinforced section and the other one is the geocell reinforced section. And the superstructure over here can be either the road embankment, railway embankment or the raft footing. The mechanism will be same, wherein the loads from the superstructure will be uh, transferred onto the subsoil. If it is un unreinforced, all the loads which are coming from the superstructure are directly transferred onto the subsoil. Whereas in case at the interface of your superstructure and the subsoil, there is a reinforcement. What happens is the geocell by its uh, nature, it, it is filled with the aggregate materials and it exerts the lateral pressure or the confinement effect. So due to this confinement effect, the pressures or the stresses which are coming from the superstructure are dispersed laterally to a certain extent. And further, it is transferring the load to a wider area uh, onto the subsoil. So with this, what happens is the partial loads are only transferred onto the underlying soil. That means the pressure or the intensity of pressure which is going onto the subsoil is low. And if you have a weaker soil which has low bearing capacity, so that means it can enhance the uh, bearing capacity of the subsoil. And when your pressures are uh, dispersed and the partial loads are going onto the underlying soil, automatically the settlements which are co corresponding to that partial loads only will happen. So in a way, even the differential settlements will be controlled using the geocell uh, for the ground improvement. So for this particular application, I'll show you one of the case study uh, wherein uh, the ground improvement has been carried out using the geo geocell and the biaxial geogrids for the ash pond at uh, a thermal power station in the state of Andhra Pradesh. 
So wherein this was the particular, uh, this was a specific cross section which was adopted over there. So this entire uh, ash pond bund was resting on the pond ash and the institute strata. The institute strata was also a very weak strata. So uh, they have planned for a ground improvement wherein they can uh, stabilize the uh, underlying soil or the stratas and improve the bearing capacity at the same time minimize the differential settlements. So for this, they have adopted the use of biaxial geogrid and the geocell. And uh, these are the images. So when uh, they have started spreading the geocell on the prepared surface. And then uh, this is the filling of geocell uh, with the sand. And then once this geocell is uh, filled, so this was the finished embankment, as you can see, which was constructed on the geocell layers. So this, this was for an embankment, uh, the ground improvement what we have seen. So the next case study is for a raft footing. Uh, this is the ground improvement works for the raft footing on the soft soil foundation using the geocell uh, for, for a uh, housing scheme, for the government housing scheme. Wherein uh, this is the geocell filling operations going on. And this is the aerial view where you can see the black portion is the unfilled portion of the geocell and this gray portion is the filled portion of the geocell. This entire area is planned to be constructed for the housing scheme, similar to the area which you can see over here. So this was the construction activities which was uh, carried out after the improvement of ground using the geocell. So this is for the application of uh, buildings. And there are a couple of projects which are uh, under construction uh, right now uh, using the geocell for the raft footings. So moving ahead with the geocell for road payment stabilization. So, so uh, as I said, for the geocell in the flexible payments. So if you uh, where, where you have with the bituminous layers, the base and subbase layers, the geocell can be used in either of the granular layers, that is in the base or the subbase to to enhance the strength of this particular layers. So what we will achieve by enhancing the strength of this particular layers is. One is you can reduce the required thicknesses of the pavement layers, thereby reducing the overall cost and uh, timelines of the project and then increasing the design life. For example, if you are not reducing any thickness, you can improve the design service life of your road pavement to a certain extent by using the reinforcement. And the third one is the use of marginal aggregate. In many of the areas in our country, we do not get the required uh, strength of the aggregate metal that can be used in the geocell, uh, in the GSB or uh, WMM. In such scenarios, we can make use of that marginal quality uh, material by using the geocell. And uh, IRC 37, which is the guidelines for uh, flexible payment design, uh, and the ISC SP 59 recommends the modulus improvement factor method for the design of flexible payments using GeoCell. And uh, this um, modulus improvement factor method is adopted to improve or the or to optimize the payment sections uh, in case of flexible payments. So uh, I am going to show you one of the project near Pune, uh, which has been done for PWD uh, Maharashtra where in the major district roads of the uh, uh, nearby areas were stabilized using the geocells because most of these roads were passing through the agricultural fields which were very uh, which were having very low cbrs and weak in nature uh, to enhance the uh, uh, the pavement uh, stability and the uh, and the life of your pavement the geocells were used in the uh, pavement structures so this is the filling operations of the geocell and this was during the rolling and uh, compaction process. So uh, moving ahead for the geocell for railway formations, basically the RDSO guidelines which I specified earlier has given this particular section wherein it is recommending the use of geocell for the ground improvement uh, under the railway formations. And apart from this, the geocell can also be used for blanket layer stabilization and the ballast layer stabilization also. And recently there is one more uh, uh, circular that has been issued wherein the geocell is recommended for the transition system to approach bridges or abutments. This is especially 
uh, in the course of enhancing the speed of trains. Now the government is planning to uh, increase the speed of trains to up to 160 kilometers per hour also. So in such situations, the abutments or the bridge approaches, this junction is the most vulnerable thing which can have differential uh, settlements and the uh, dif different behaviors. So at this particular junctions, the uh, railways is recommending to use geocells to stabilize the uh, approaches. So this is one of the project near Kota wherein uh, the geocell has been uh, used for the blanket layer stabilization uh, in, uh, below the ballast layer. So this is the typical cross section which was adopted and uh, you can see this was on the existing railway track wherein the uh, mud pumping and other scenarios happened and it, it caused the uh, railway track to become weaker. So there the geocell was uh, stretched on the top of the geotextile and uh, this is how the uh, further layers after once the geocell is filled with the uh, infill material then the further layers were laid and the tracks were being uh, installed so regarding the geocell for slope protection basically as i said when when, it, when i say the slope protection it can be either the uh, artificial embankments like road embankments or the uh, railway embankments or the natural slopes also so these slopes can be protected from erosion or the soil erosion using the geocell. And when I'm talking about the geocell, this geocell can uh, can have possible infill materials, uh, either the vegetative soil or the aggregate filling or the concrete filling also. So if you have if you want a green uh, so slope with the vegetation, you can fill the same uh, geocell with the vegetative soil and with the necessary uh, vegetative measures. So of course this will have certain maintenance uh, once it is constructed for the maintaining the greenery and all. And the other alternatives is the aggregate filling. Uh, like conventionally whatever you have the 300 mm thick uh, stone pitching or the aggregate filling on the slope that can be optimized using geocell because geocell thickness varies from only 75 mm to 100 mm thickness. So with that you can optimize the requirement of the natural aggregates and at the same time prevent the soil erosion. And other alternative is the concrete filling, which is an alternative to the regular concrete pitching on the uh, slopes. So these are possible infill materials for the geocell or for the slope protection. So this is one of the project in the state of Gujarat, wherein the geocell was used on the slope protection for the slope protection and the infill material for this particular project was the aggregate. So this is the project. Uh, this is the finished uh, slope with the aggregate infill. And this is the another project for a landfill slope wherein the soil was used as an infill material and the vegetation was developed on the slope of the uh, landfill. So, and this is another project in the state of Bihar wherein the concrete was used on the slope surface uh, and it was reinforced with the geocell. And uh, at the last, moving ahead with the geocell for retaining structures. So uh, the geocell can be used for the gravity retaining structures or the reinforced soil structures. Uh, and the design principle is uh, similar to the regular gravity structure or the regular uh, reinforced soil structure because in case of gravity, the geocell is uh, designed as designed to be retained to retain the uh, backfill by its self weight. In case of reinforced soil wall, this geocell is only used for the fascia and the regular reinforcement is used uh, to retain the uh, slopes. So the most important thing is the uh, covering of geocells fascia because uh, if you see here uh, these geocells once constructed the faces of this geocell uh, panels should be covered with the vegetation because this geosynthetic uh, this is made up of a polymer so it can degrade over a period of time so it is necessary to cover this slope or the fascia with the green vegetation. So once it is covered Yes, then the, uh, the the structure which is inside the greenery will be safe. So this is regarding the geocell for retaining structures. So moving ahead with the installation methodology. So we I, I'll split the installation methodology into two parts. One for the ground improvement or pavements or retaining structures, which is wherein geocell is installed on the flat surface. And the other part is the uh, uh, geocell installation for slopes. So first starting with the ground, the flat surface. 
So first uh, the surface preparation. So before laying, installing or laying the geocell, you, we need to prepare the ground surface and make sure we do not have any undulations or the sharp objects or uh, any kind of uh, foreign material. And once the slope is prepared, we have to stretch the geocells and uh, uh, expand the same. And when we are expanding, we need to ensure that we have the temporary or the permanent. It is up to you. We maintain this uh, anchors temporary or permanent. This is to maintain the alignment on both the sides or the edges. So and and at the same time to keep the geocell stretched till the material is filled up. So once the geocell is laid, <clears throat> so this is how your installed geocell will look and which is ready for uh, the filling operations. So and when we talk about the filling operations, uh, we need to ensure that the uh, construction machinery or the vehicles are not allowed to directly uh, pass through or on a uh, pass on the geocell. So the filling should be done on the back tipping process. Either you can uh, dump the fill material from the back side and uh, then spread it on the geocell and compact it. Or if you have a, uh, uh, dumps nearby, you can just using the uh, excavator or uh, any kind of uh, uh, missionaries, you can just fill it and spread on the geocell. So once the filling operation is completed, this is how our uh, filled up uh, geocell layer will look like. So this was about the flat surface. In case of slopes, uh, the steps will be similar, but the operations or the uh, the procedures will be a little uh, different because on the slope surface, we need to uh, prepare the slope first and the anchoring trench also because this anchor trench will keep the uh, geocell layer on the slope uh, hold it and hold it tight so <clears throat> once this slope is prepared then this is the uh, stretching operations on the geocell so this is how the geocell is uh, stretched on the slope surface and you can on the right side you can see the uh, j shape hooks or the pins which are used to anchor the geocells at regular intervals so this will be typically around uh, 300 mm th uh, thickness. We'll drive that on the cell walls and no, no, ensure uh, it is fastened. So once this is stretched, this is how it will look on the slope surface. This is before the filling operations. And uh, once this is installed, as I said, we can, uh, based on the project requirements, we can fill it with either with the uh, vegetative soil or the aggregates or the concrete, depending on the uh, requirements. So. Finally, to conclude, uh, basically the solutions or the applications which I am uh, uh, covering using the uh, which I have covered using the geocell are technically superior and economical compared to the conventional uh, in various applications. So these geocell materials, uh, when we are applying for different applications, these are in line with the initiatives of the uh, MORTH or the NHI uh, towards minimizing the natural resources or reducing the carbon footprint on the environment. And the design methodologies or the specification, as I said, are covered all, uh, in the IRC, MORTH, and BIS standards. And this product specification or the items are already included in various SORs. So, as far as TechFab's GeoCell product is concerned, we have the CE certification for our GeoCell. And uh, this product is certified by IITs. Uh, BITRA, that is Bombay Textile Research Association, and our laboratories, uh, the testing laboratories are NABL and Gilab certified laboratories. So TechFab India being the largest manufacturer of geosynthetics in India, we have the highest manufacturing capacities of uh, uh, geocell in order to supply huge quantities also in a very short period of time. And our manufacturing facilities are uh, certified with ISO 9001-2015. And uh, as I said, our uh, laboratories are certified with NABL and Gilab. So in case of uh, uh, the projects, uh, the engineering and techno commercial assistance for all the stakeholders right from the inception of the project to its completion, uh, we do support to all the stakeholders so that we maximize the project returns. So this is about the uh, uh, the session on uh, GeoCell exclusively. And uh, <clears throat> I take this opportunity to uh, announce that we are coming up with another uh, webinar and that will be on the drainage composite and we'll be announcing the date and we'll be uh, uh, writing to you all and with the date and time for that. So 
and regarding any queries you have on today's session, you can either write on the chat box or the question answers uh, uh, box of this particular meeting or else you can uh, note down the email IDs and the mobile numbers given over here. You can contact us any, at any point of time. We'll be happy to uh, revert back to you at the soonest possible. <clears throat> Thank you one and all, and I thank on behalf of uh, TechFab India to to uh, to everyone who has taken your valuable time and uh, attended this webinar session. <clears throat>